So 22 would be, how can a mind clone be an exact copy of a person's mind? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. a good question. How can a mind clone be an exact copy of a person's mind? I was actually wondering, why are you using the word exact in your question? Because nobody would expect that they are exactly the same, would they? Oh, it's actually one of the most frequent um, questions I receive. And um, actually one of the most frequent criticisms that I receive. That people say, uh, there's no way for a mind clone to be an exact copy of me because um, I'm constantly changing and it cannot constantly know who I am. And anyway, um, how could a mind clone capture 100% of all of my thoughts and memories. So then people say, if the mind clone is not an exact copy of me, then it really is not me, it's somebody else. And, and um, Ricky, that's one of the most frequent criticisms I receive. Yeah, but yeah, I, I was just wondering when, when I was reading the question, why this exact? Because, you know, even, I mean, as you argue in your blog post that the identical twins aren't exactly the same. So, oh, of course. Yeah, and so, people will say that the identical twins are therefore two different people. Yeah, but I mean, the much more interesting question, though, is uh, how different can the mind clone be that we still talk, you know, about this common identity I share with the mind clone. What? Yes, that is the much better way to phrase the question, Ulrike. How different can a mind clone be and still be me? Yeah, so how different can it be? How would you argue? I think that as long as the mind clone and the biological original see themselves as the same person, then they are the same person. But how do you find out about your mind clone? I mean, you only can find out when the mind clone is there. How do you judge if it's a good mind clone or if it's not a good one, if it's, you know, close to you or not? How do you judge this? Well, what I propose in, um, in my blog post is to establish what I call a real-life test yeah. for mind clones, in which um, during the course of one year, a mind clone spends time, perhaps an hour or more a week, with uh, one or two um, experts in psychology. These could be cyber psychologists, or uh, con con uh, psychologists who specialize in consciousness studies, mm -hmm. and um, as well, the biological original spends time with the psychologists. And if after one year, the psychologist um, writes an official opinion in their professional um, capacity, yeah. that the mind clone is, for all intents and purposes, the same conscious identity as the biological original, then it should be accepted as a matter of fact and as a matter of law that the mind clone and the original person are close enough together to be the same person. What could be such criteria to judge upon? I think that um, ultimately you have to rely on a gestalt impression of many, many um, things. Mm -hmm. But some of the uh, words that would, um, to me, s summarize many of these considerations are mannerisms. Do the two people, does the mind clone and the biological orig original have similar mannerisms? When, when you see a person one day and you see them another day with the same mannerisms, it makes you think that they are the same person. Uh, second is personality. Yeah. Uh, we each have a characteristic way of, of responding to events in the outside world. A third important factor are our recollections. 
we don't ourselves remember everything from one day to the next and certainly not one year to the next, but the most important um, events in our life, the landmarks of our life are remembered. Mm -hmm. And if the mind clone and the biological original remember the same landmarks, that's a good indication that they're the same person. Mm -hmm. Feelings is a fourth category that's very, very important. We are emotional beings. Mm -hmm. and If uh, the biological original uh, has a feeling of love for nature, but the uh, mind clone does not love nature, then I think that they are far enough apart to not be the same person. Mm -hmm. And then there are the very important um, aspects of beliefs, attitudes, and values. This goes beyond psychology. This goes into the way we structure um, in our own mind the outside world. We structure it with beliefs, attitudes, and values. Mm -hmm. So if the beliefs, attitudes, and values are close enough together that we consider it to be the same person, this is something that the psychologist can learn after a year of interviews. Okay, so it's a kind of, of, of checking if patterns are kind of equal? Exactly. If the pattern of mannerisms, personality, recollections, feelings, yeah. beliefs, attitudes, and values are so similar that when you are talking to one person, the mind clone, it's, you may as well have been talking to the biological original, then they would be considered the same person. Yeah. So if you talk about these patterns, I mean, this does have implication for the mindware, right? Yes. The, the job of mindware is to analyze digital reflections of a biological original's life their videos, their interviews, their um, emails, their searches, their chats, their texts, mm -hmm. their um, answers to um, psychological quests, tests, and to analyze all of this information and to then um, set the parameters of a um, mind operating system to match those same characteristic patterns. And uh, once the mindware has done this, it will be able to create a mind clone. Yeah. How far are we there with this? Mind? I mean, pattern recognition in software is still, it's just like magic, isn't it? I think we're very close, um, Yuriki. Um, the, the biggest experts in this area, such as uh, Werner Wenge, yeah. um, and Ray Kurzweil are both in agreement that this will occur in the 2020 to 2030 time frame. So even if they are wrong by 10 or 20 years, this is, is something which is in the current generation. Mm. So do you know people, I mean, I know you do upload your mind files. I started two or three years ago, but then I stopped. <laughs> uh, that, that you are already experimenting with? We all, yes, yes. First of all, we all upload our mind files, whether we think we do or not, because um, all we leave so many digital footprints on the Internet right. that uh, almost none of us in a modern society are able to, to work um, or play in any way um, without inadvertently creating a mind file. Even if the mind file is not digital, but is reflected in the conversations we have with friends, mm -hmm. and then friends recollecting those conversations to other people, we create an analog mind file in the minds of other people that we know. Now, you can begin to test this out um, with um, things like avatars and chatbot software at uh, websites such as lifenot.com. Yeah. Yeah. and cyberrev.org, where you can train um, a rudimentary form of mindware to respond in a similar way that you respond. But if you, I just, I mean, just came into my mind when I heard you saying that, uh, you know, leaving all these digital footprints on the internet, 
I think if, if you look at social crafts, all this kind of stuff, Google is experimenting, Facebook ex is experimenting with, is this not something, or, or cloud computing and, and what they, companies like Salesforce are trying to build out there in the cloud, isn't this a parallel uh, uh, development of such kind of things? What it's a supportive development. Everywhere on the web where you have left your digital footprints, you have left your digital mind file. And it doesn't have to be in any one site. Um, your digital mind file is spread across the entire World Wide Web. And um, if you wanted to create a mind file in the next uh, 10 or 20 or 30 years, it will be very simple to create uh, web spiders that will crawl out throughout the web find all of the uh, digital footprints of your wiki, um, combine them together into a single linked mind file, and then Mindware will operate on that mind file to create a mind clone of your wiki. Yeah, but you wouldn't consider this software on the web, you wouldn't consider as Mindware. No, it's not Mindware. Mindware is something which which um, analyzes a database. The database is your mind file and creates from that database a customized mind operating system okay. that matches the biological original who created the digital footprints. So the web links would only be a tiny little part of it? The web links are the database that the mindware uses to create the mind clone. Yeah, okay, now I got it. I think this is it for Chapter 22. Thank you so much, Ricky. I look Thank forward you. to seeing you in New York. Yo, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.